Now, before we start any of the stuff in this video, just a safety disclaimer here. These are some pretty caustic bases. I think caustic is the right word. Whatever, they're nasty bases. Use PPE, protect yourself, follow manufacturer recommendations, etc. I'm just a guy playing around here. Use this video at your own discretion. For those of you that want to make a solution for yourself at home and you've got an empty container like this kicking around, 100 grams of the potassium carbonate for the remaining portion of water. Use distilled water or RO if you have, and you've got your own pH up, and it'll work very similarly to what you've got here. The other side note about using this stuff too is make small pH changes, wait 15 minutes, and then test your pH again to make sure that uh, those buffers haven't reacted and changed that pH slightly. So I've got 2.5 grams of potassium carbonate and I'm gonna add the exact solution that's in my reservoir just to see if uh, we get any precipitates forming out of this before I try this in my grow. Now 100 ml should dissolve us completely, so let's just see what happens. So this dissolved completely. I am going to leave this for 24 hours to see if any precipitates form. And already it looks like there is some cloudiness in the solution. We'll give it 24 hours. We'll see. After only a few minutes, look at that. There's definitely something going on in there. A few more minutes later, you can clearly see a line where the precipitates are falling down to. Okay, so I've left this 24 hours, and you can clearly see there's some precipitates that have happened there. I guess the next step is going to be to see what the pH of this solution is. So this pH is extremely high, uh, 10.55. I'm going to bring this back. I'm going to try to get this pH of this solution back to 6 to see what happens with those uh, precipitates. To do that, I'm just going to use my same pH down acid. And in the syringe, I'm just going to fill the remainder with RO water up to the 10 cc mark, just to dilute it by 10% because this is a small beaker. And let's see what we got here. This is already extremely encouraging because uh, that's going to be a really strong buffer as long as I can use it. Now, this is interesting. That acid is clearly reacting with the precipitates in there. 6.7. Okay, we're getting close. So I'm going to go back to diluting. This buffering capacity is just totally amazing. Just for reference, typically when I'm using this uh, acid concentrate, I use 1 cc for my entire reservoir, which is 16 gallons. We're talking right now, this is 400, 400 ml, which means this solution has an incredible buffering capacity. Look at this as we're adding acid too, those precipitates are totally disappearing. We're going back into solution. Oh, that's close. Okay, well that's as close as I'm gonna get, I think. Oh, look at that. It goes right back to six. Interesting. And all of the precipitates are back in solution. That's extremely encouraging because that means this solution is just going to provide a tremendous buffer. Okay, so after seeing this, I don't want to just dump stuff into my reservoir or my Dutch buckets because it's been so successful. I don't want to put something in there that's going to mess it up. I had to actually check out and do some research on what was happening there. So it turns out the calcium nitrate that's in my reservoir and the magnesium sulfate do react with potassium carbonate and they'll make uh, either one of two things. If the pH goes extremely high like we've seen in the solution, you'll get uh, magnesium carbonate or you'll get calcium carbonate. That's the precipitates that we were seeing in this solution there earlier. The good news is is as long as we keep our pH in the range for hydroponics, we won't have problems with the precipitates coming out of there. And it also, the carbonates, 
inside of our reservoir act as a really good buffer. So that's a perk. There is one downside, however. So potassium carbonate, we know that potassium is good for the plant, but what is a carbonate other than a buffer? Is that harmful to the plant? So I did some research there. And it turns out it is in higher concentrations. So the stock solution I mixed up there with the 2.5 grams in that 500 ml beaker. If you're wondering where I came up with that 2.5 grams, why well, I use that? So 2.5 grams of the potassium carbonate inside of my 16 gallon reservoir will provide me with 23.5 parts per million of potassium, which I know is not going to be a massive spike in potassium, potentially the leading to nutrient lockout issues. That same quantity inside this reservoir is 18 and change parts per million of carbonate. And the point where it becomes toxic to the plants is 100 parts per million and higher. So that stays way below what we need. I also did go through and check my master blend to see what's in there, if there's any carbonates inside there, and there is nothing listed that has carbonates. So I know I'm starting from zero. So now the next question that you probably have that I know that I have is how effective is that potassium carbonate in that solution for adjusting my pH back up versus your standard, everybody's got these things, general hydroponics solution. Uh, so let's find out. Okay, to run this test, I'm going to just put in 500 ml, and you can see from the watering can spout, this is directly out of my reservoir. So I'm just going to fill this up to 500 ml, and we'll check the pH before we start. Then I'm going to take my pH, my stock pH up solution. This is what I've always been using, General Hydroponics. And I'm just going to put a cc in to a syringe. And we're going to see what that ends up doing. Okay, so we're starting at 6.1. So I'm going to put the full cc in. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing when I use my stock solution. So this ends up now at 7.2. 7.26, so that's a rise of uh, 1.16. So I'm going to dump this out, wash this container, and we'll do the same thing with my holding pH up solution. Okay, we're going to fill this thing back up again to the 500 ml mark, and I do have a 2.5 gram solution mixed up in, this is about 250 ml of water, and there it is, 6.1. So we'll add that CC in. Definitely a much tamer solution. So that gives me an idea roughly how much to mix in there. It looks like I need to make that about 10 times as strong. You know, as I was doing the research, I seen a comment on Reddit and I just realized this, that typically this is apparently supposed to be a 10% stock solution. Well, if I'm using 250 ml of water and I need roughly 25 grams, turns out that would be pretty dang close to 10%. So that's pretty interesting. And if that gives me the same strength as the stock solution, I mean, dang, I can make this stuff for cheap. So that my reservoir constantly goes... Uh, the pH constantly drops. I'm always adding pH up. I've gone through bottles of this stuff and I'm still on my first ever bottle that I've ever bought for pH down. <laughs> so I just don't use pH down ever. It's always been pH up for me. I'm going to go ahead and add another uh, 22 and a half grams into my beaker here of potassium carbonate and we're going to test that again. Now this stuff is supposed to be extremely water soluble, so this should all easily go into the solution. <laughs> you know what the best part of this is? I never intended this to be pH up. I intended to use this for potassium, for other experiments I'm running in my grow room. But it turns out I've just stumbled across these things. It's dirt cheap. I'll leave a link down below. But this is, I think this will be a lifetime supply of pH up for me and uh, random potassium when I'm supplementing that. 
like forever. I don't think I'm ever going to buy another one. Another nice part about using that stuff is it's food grade. It's 100% pure. Oh, check this out. So just from me going and rinsing out the uh, measuring spoons and stuff I used, my stock solution is totally done. So we'll give that a measure and we're going to see how that compares. Okay, so I used up my whole little uh, watering can here. I had to refill it. So we're going to do that same experiment again and just see kind of the before and after. So to the 500 ml line again. Okay, 5.88. And that's just the general hydroponics pH up. You can kind of see the precipitation action going on there. 5.88. It changed to 7.28. Now we'll try uh, my homemade version. Another 500 ml. It should be the exact same starting pH because out of the same can again. So I'm just going to give the meter a second here. 5.9 is our start. And I see the same precipitation action going on. And it looks like it ends up at 7.12. So that's pretty dang close. I'm pretty happy with that. I've got a stock solution here. I'm going to just do the math. I don't even need to actually, because there is no way I'm going to be using, uh, what would it be, 10% of that solution, 100 ml in my reservoir? Not a chance. I typically use about 10 milliliters in a reservoir through its whole um, capacity, I guess it would be. So that's nowhere close to reaching any toxicity levels of carbonate and it's nowhere close to overdosing uh, the potassium to cause any nutrient lockout issues. Uh, I'm going to be using that once this thing is gone. That is going to be my uh, new potassium or my new pH up solution. Pretty stoked about that. About making your pH solution from this stuff isn't even the fact that it's dirt cheap. It's got a carbonate in there which acts as a buffer so for me this is awesome my ph is constantly dropping in my reservoir actually in all my grows it's just how it's always been so for me to be able to add a ph up that adds a little bit of buffer i'm pretty stoked i just accidentally stumbled upon this hopefully it helps somebody else out and somebody else finds use of this video as well Oh, and if you guys would like to see this in an A-B test inside of the uh, two pails you see behind me there, leave a comment down below and I'll run it through the uh, test pails.